Hello, folks. This is your host, Tammy Tucky, and you are now listening to the Tierra Talk Show. We bring you rare interviews with the makers of Disney magic. Whether they be singers, actors, Imagineers, animators, they have all made their mark on the Disney name. Be sure to check out the show notes, other episodes, contests, our social media pages from Facebook to Twitter, and more on our official website at www.thetierratalkshow.com. All guest opinions are theirs and theirs alone and do not represent the opinions of the Tierra Talk Show or the host. The Tierra Talk Show is not associated with the Disney Company. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode. And from all of us here at the Tierra Talk Show, have a hoop de doo day. This week at the Tierra Talk Show, we welcome back our cast member corner segment in which we speak to past or current cast members of the Disney theme parks from around the world. I'd like to welcome former Walt Disney World character, actress, and singer, Lianza Cornette. Welcome to the show, Lianza. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for asking me to do this. This is so much fun. I love talking about my time at Disney. It's fun. Because this is really special because you were the first Ariel in the Voyage of the Little Mermaid stage show at Disney's MGM Studios, formerly known as. And I've not found any interviews or anything on this subject except, you know, on Wikipedia saying that you played Ariel. You were the first Ariel. So I just thought, well, somebody should interview about you about this. So I'm so glad you could come on the show and talk about it. Yeah, well, thank you for asking me. I was actually one of um, one of three of the first. Um, we there there were three of us hired at the same time um, to open the show because otherwise it, that's a big caseload on on somebody doing the show um, because we did eight shows pretty much eight shows a day and you know so they they hired three of us at a time and and uh, it was exciting for all of us but I think. Um, you know, my my getting there was just such a such an amazing trip, such an amazing journey, something that completely happened out of the blue, um, and was a, such a dream come true. But nothing I expected at that time. I mean, it was it was crazy. And the other mermaids and I still stay in touch with each other. We're all in touch with. I mean, you know, I, it's a it's a community. It's a family of people. So. It's you're, neat. You're more than welcome to, to name them because I, I feel like they should get some recognition too. <laughs> I didn't well, know that there were other mermaids at the time either. Yeah, there were three of us hired at the same time. It, literally, probably on the same in the same week. Um, Michelle Martin was one, and she lives in Connecticut and is active in her singing career. The other one, her name was Jenny, and I, I'm sorry that I don't remember her last name, but um, she was also from the uh, Northeast like area. And uh, we all started, you know, at the, and then, and then it was like this influx of once that show started to go up and running, we were the first singing aerials. And then as Disney does, sometimes they will hire um, non-singing characters to lip sync. And so they were lip syncing to my voice, which was kind of funny. Um, <laughs> so we had, you know, we did, we did have different mermaids, but we were the first three that were hired. Yeah. That's pretty amazing because at the time, Ariel was just this uh, huge character for Disney uh, since her film came out in 89 and The Little Mermaid just was all across the board, very, very popular. So, Mm -hmm. and and you guys are having 17 minute shows, you know, back to back. It's kind of amazing now. Uh, You know, last time I was there, I was just, when I was exiting the theater, I made sure I was kind of like the last person there because you can see that, you know, some of the stage managers are already, you know, setting up for the next show. Yeah, it was pretty fast and furious, you know, and in those first, those first days, we were still learning the magic of the show and when I say that I mean like the the on the rock where you know Ariel's fin gets sucked off of the you know you're standing on this big hydro and we were still working out the kinks of all of the the technical stuff and there was a lot of technical stuff we had that huge puppet um the shell, I mean, the the clamshell that I came out in, I mean, it was, there was a lot, blacklight puppetry, animation, it had a lot going on. And so our rehearsals were very involved and we worked really hard. And so, you know, when, anytime you do a show with any cast of people, you are, you know, you're, you're putting the show together. And so we had personalities and, and, um, it was just, it's such, I, it's, I have such amazing fond memories of that time 
it's probably if anybody asked me what was my favorite job to date, that's probably it. Is is when I spent my time, you know, at, at Disney MGM, and it is. It's fun to go back there. I took the kids. I took my kids there a couple of years ago. It's it's been probably five years ago, so they were quite young, and um, I took them through the whole, you know, the 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 uh, grotto, you know, where they, you know. Neptune talks and you get the whole speech about the Little Mermaid and then you enter the theater and we watched, you know, I don't even, I can't even remember who the mermaid was that, um, that performed, but my kids had heard about it for all of this time and they'd seen, sh they'd seen pictures. So now they got to actually see the show and my oldest son, who at the time was probably about, he's 14 now, so was, he was probably about nine or 10 and he, I remember him saying, telling people, you know, my mom is a mermaid. I mean, like he was telling, and I said, well, I, I was the mermaid. I'm not really a mermaid. <laughs> but he, they were so excited Aww. because it was so fun for them. And it is. Um, it's such a spectacle. That show was so um, innovative. We had a wonderful director. We had great leads. And I just remember, I remember going back into the back because we had, it was a blacklight puppetry show as well. So we had all these people. <laughs> dressed in black from head to toe, hoods, mask, shoes. I mean, it was black because that's how they performed the puppet show. You know, the puppets, in the, especially in the beginning, the, the under the sea number, but we'd have all these people in all dressed in black and all covered completely and all completely exhausted because we worked so hard and we worked so many shows back to back and they would be just like <sighs> zonked out on the, on the green room couches. I love that you just recently went back, you know, there's been a couple of changes to the, you know, visual attributes of the show, you know, especially there's no shell now for Ariel, you know, yeah. I felt like that was like a, such a beautiful touch to it. And I have to ask about the tail. Yeah, we're going to go into a little bit, you know, behind the scenes here, because, sure. you know, I haven't been able to really find anything legitimate that, you know, explains how the tail worked, because it really didn't have your legs in it, correct? Was it just like a puppet that you were controlling? Yeah, my legs were never in it. I actually, the, the way that it worked was the, that big clamshell that I came out in, I sat down in a hole and sat down on what essentially was a bicycle seat and there were pedals and that's how I controlled the tail. So as I was singing, I could move it back and forth by which pedal I was pushing. <laughs> <laughs> and I would try and get it as far left and as far right, like to make it as, you know, I wanted to make it very dramatic. And um, next to me where there was the the uh, the little cave where Flotsam and Jetsam, the puppets, did their thing. The two puppeteers that were always in that little hole would be talking to me the whole time through my whole, you know, these are the backstage things that you don't, like, once you get comfortable in the show, you start making, you know, you start having fun with it. One of, I mean, we would rehearse, uh, all of the mermaids uh, that sang would um, warm up, you know, before the show. And, and some of us warmed up with scales and some of us warmed up, like Michelle always warmed up with the national anthem. And like, we all had our things that we would warm up our voice. And uh, a couple of times, it just so happened that our mics, which are, they were held in our wigs, you know, the tiny little, probably the size of my pinky. Uh, we had, that's how we held our mics and they, they would be up and the audience would be coming in and they'd hear, Oh, say, can you see like <laughs> one of the mermaids warming up little mistakes here and there that we made. But I do remember like the, the, one of the, one of our Max, uh, the dog, um, he was this amazing Max Troy was his name. But he was always off stage because he would come leaping onto the stage. But he would do a backstage before he came out where we were in eye shot of him and we could see him. He would do all these things. And he's, you know, he's dressed in this gigantic sheepdog outfit to uh, just hilarious playing dead. And it would crack us up. And we're having, you know, the prince and me are supposed to, or the mermaid are supposed to be having this like moment where it's, ah, and we see this dog, this gigantic human dog over on the side of the stage doing whatever he's doing. I mean, it, it, it varied from show to show. As a cast, we bonded so quickly, and 
and so well that that we were always just playing jokes on each other. And we had a lot of guest celebrities that came and saw the show as well. Yeah, I was just uh, going to ask that because I, I saw a photo of Jody Benson coming in at some point. But yeah, uh, Jody came to see the show. Um, Michael Jackson came. Wow. Um, and we did a private performance for him. Um, we had Neil Patrick, Neil Patrick Harris, who is a very well, I mean, obviously he's well known, but one of his, um, one of the things that he loves to do is um, magic. He loves, he is a magician of sorts. And uh, so he was very interested in seeing how we performed the, the, the show, you know, from backstage. So he actually watched the show from backstage. And at the time, you know, back in the early 90s when we were doing, or 89, 90, whatever, that we were doing the show, he was just coming off of the Doogie Howser so we had Doogie Hauser in the audience, so that was kind of neat. We've, yeah, we had a lot of um, a lot of people that came through and, and watched the show. Some we did private performances for, and some just came as part of the audience. But it was fun. You know, I unfortunately I was only there for a, a little less than a year performing that show um, because I, I I got the job in November of ninety. I think 92, right? Beca- or 91, because it's it yeah, officially exactly. premiered in January. And then I won the pageant in September of 92, so I really, I was only there for about a year. What's funny is that I, when I won the pageant, I became very paranoid that I would not be able to get a job after I gave up the crown as Miss America. I was so, like, worried. And so the, the gentleman who hired me, uh, Ronnie Rodriguez wrote a letter of intent for me. I have it in a scrapbook somewhere. Um, wrote a letter of intent saying that they would hire me back as the mermaid at the same pay, same everything, <laughs> if I wanted the job back. And so during the year as Miss America, I came back so I could keep my um, character status and keep my insurance. So I actually performed on my Easter break at, while I was Miss America. I think it's made it over 25, almost 25 years now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, pretty amazing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's pretty remarkable. And, um, and it's really held up. And, you know, it's been really, really fun for me to, thanks to social media, to be able to connect with people from that era in my life. And I've I kept like, a lot of the same friends that I worked with and stayed in touch over the years. But now we you know, we all stay in touch. In fact, I just had a friend who came and stayed here with me in Los Angeles, you know, that worked at Disney. It's, it's, we're, we were such a, a tight community of people because it's such a unique experience to, to be able to work there and especially to have a show that, that was so special to all of us to be able to open it. It wasn't like we, I mean, not that there's anything wrong with going into a show that's already opened and already existing, but it was really neat to be a part of the starting project. And to be there from the very, very beginning and, um, and work side by side to make that show happen and then have it be such a success. So, yeah, those are good. You know, those are such good days, such good memories. I, I wouldn't give it up for the world. And it's a, you know, it's a show that still stands the test of time. If I had to pick one to go down in history as my favorite job ever, I think that would be it. And now to end our interview, I'm going to ask the fab three questions we always ask each guest that comes on the show. Okay. And we'll start with the Donald one, which is, as a child, what Disney film was one of your favorites to see in the movie theater? Cinderella. And our goofy question, what Disney character, besides Ariel, do you think would be your best friend if you met them in person? I don't know. That's a great question. Um, You know what? I would... I would say just from my era, probably Jasmine. She was so spunky and sassy. And, you know, I love that about the Disney characters, the women that are just like, you know, uh, they have a mind of their own. So I like her. Like the handsome guy, the genie, the the girl, you know, the best friend. I could do that. (laughs) (laughs) And her Mickey question, if I asked you to name any Disney song at this very moment, what immediately comes to mind? Let it go. Well, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show, and, and I hope you won't mind singing us out a little bit of part of your world, if that's okay Gladly. with you. <laughs> Anytime. I want to be where the people are. I want to see, want to see them dancing, walking around on those, what's that called again? Feet. Up where they walk, up where they run, up where they play all day in the sun. Wandering, wandering free, free. 
<laughs> Wish I could be part of that world.